Welcome back to day five of the 14 day challenge. And in today's video, we're gonna learn how to make this 3D printable milk crate inside Fusion 360. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it and get started. So to get started with this design, the first thing we need to do here is hover over to create new component, And let's go ahead and type in milk crate within the dialog box shown here. Next, what we wanna do is press okay. From here, let's go ahead and create a cube within our canvas menu here. And to do that, let's hover over to create sketch, then select the bottom plane. And let's go ahead and hover over to create rectangle, then center rectangle. And then from here, we can select the origin and just drag out this rectangle. The dimensions we wanna use here is 75, pressing tab, 75 press enter. From here, we can press E on our keyboard. Fusion 360 will automatically select this profile and we can just drag this up to match the exact same dimensions as we created for our square. Press OK. The next thing we want to do here is to import an image onto this face here as we will be referencing this image so that way we can create the design of our milk crate. To find this image, you can go over to school.com where we have the image hosted and it's right below underneath this video here on day five. To download this resource, just scroll down all the way at the bottom of this page, click on Milk Crate and go ahead and save this to your computer. Once you have it saved, we can move on to the next step here. The next step is to add an image onto this front face here. To do that, let's hover over to this icon shown on the right hand side called Canvas and this feature will allow us to import an image within Fusion 360. Let's hover over to insert from my computer, then go ahead and double click on the image you just downloaded and then select the front face here. The image will automatically be the exact same size as the cube. And with that done, go ahead and press OK. The next thing we need to do here is to shell this design from the very top. To do that, let's press S on our keyboard, type in shell, and then go ahead and select the top face here. Let's go ahead and shell this in by around 2.5 millimeters and press OK. Next, what we want to do is to create an offset for this top edge here where this entire square sits. To do that, let's hover over and press O on our keyboard, select this front face, and then from here, what we can do is select this outer edge and drag this in to around negative 1.5 and press OK. Additionally, if you can't see what you're doing within the sketch environment because of the image, you can also go ahead and change the opacity of the image to get a better view of what you're doing. To do that, you can hover over to the browser menu on the left hand side, then click on canvas, then right click on the image, then click on edit canvas and from here, you can change the canvas opacity to somewhere around 15 or 20. I'm gonna change this to 15 as I can still see what my sketch looks like while still being able to see the entirety of the image. Once that's done, finish sketch. From here, what we wanna do is take this newly created profile and drag this in by pressing E on our keyboard and typing in negative 1.5. Make sure the operation is set to cut and press OK. The next step in this process is to create the lines or the webbings of this pattern shown on the milk crate. To do that, let's go ahead and turn off the canvas. Let's go ahead and toggle on sketches and turn off sketch two. From here, let's go ahead and click on create sketch, then zoom right in. And what we wanna do is to create a sketch on this face here. And this face wraps around the entirety of the cube where we did not create the offset. You want to make sure you're not creating the design here because we'll be using this face here to create the web that embeds into this face here. Go ahead and select this front face here. And from here, Fusion will automatically reorient you to where you're going to start designing. Let's go ahead and toggle on our canvas. And then from here, pressing L on our keyboard, and what we want to do is draw out the lines where the lines exist within our milk crate shown here. To do that, let's go ahead and draw out a line from bottom to top. 
just kind of matching the pattern of our milk crate. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect as we can make adjustments and changes later on. I'm gonna go ahead and draw each and every single line, just kind of matching the style of the milk crate. Make sure not to complete the entirety of this design because what we wanna do is start from the left-hand side and then create a line down the middle, which will mirror all the features here to the right-hand side. So go ahead and create a line down the middle all the way to the top and make sure your lines end up right in the middle. Then go ahead and finish up this design by adding the lines where appropriate. And this might take a few minutes, but go ahead and take your time to do so. Once that's done, your design should look something similar to mine. These lines are directly on top of where the features are shown within the milk crate. And these are what are referred to as webs. So to add these features onto your milk crate, what you need to do is click on finish sketch, then zoom out so we get a better look. And what we wanna do is click on create, then click on web. This will allow us to select the lines we've just created and to create the same features or pattern that is shown within our canvas. Let's go ahead and hold command or control if you're on Windows, so that way we can select multiple lines. Next, let's go ahead and select the lines shown here and make sure to go ahead and take your time here as it's very easy to select the wrong ones. While you're holding command or control, it will automatically show what it looks like without the feature added, but once you let go, it's automatically going to appear in your environment shown here. The next step in this process is to press OK. With that done, turn off Sketch 3, turn off Canvas, and now as you can see, we have the left-hand side of our milk crate already designed. Let's go ahead and mirror this feature by pressing S on our keyboard, typing in Mirror, then selecting Mirror, and make sure to select the web feature down below on the left-hand side. To mirror this, let's go ahead and select the mirror plane. And what we want to do is to reorient it so that way we can see our origin and select this plane here. So that way these features will mirror to the other side. If by any chance you don't see this, you can go ahead and toggle on origin and then select the origin and press OK. And as you can see, we have the base pattern of our design fully mapped out within Fusion 360. The next thing we need to do here is to create a cutout. There's an opening or a cutout here that creates this spider-like web shown within our milk crate. Let's go ahead and turn on our canvas so we get a better look. And the next thing we need to do here is to create that cutout by clicking that face, pressing E, and then just dragging it through. Make sure the operation is set to cut and press OK. The next step in this process, you need to go ahead and create the webs, but matching this pattern shown here. To do that, let's go ahead and turn off our canvas. Let's zoom right in, then click on Create Sketch. From here, select the top face shown here. And what we wanna do is to create an offset. So that way we're creating a virtual boundary so that way we don't accidentally overstep. To do that, press O on our keyboard, then select this edge here, and then type in, and then type in negative 1.5. Press OK. And now what we wanna do is to create the overall pattern of this web-like feature shown within our crate. To start this, let's press L on our keyboard, then from the very center, all the way to the very top, we're gonna to wanna to change this line here to a construction line here. Next, what we can do is start creating the pattern for this design by pressing L on our keyboard, then selecting an edge shown here, and make sure to select the offset edge, not this inner one, from the left to the right, and just kind of matching up the overall design here. And make sure to take your time here as this webbing isn't perfect or as accurate. And we wanna make sure that what we do here reflects correctly onto the other side. Once you're happy with the look you created, Let's go ahead and set up some dimensions here so that way they are all the same distance. To do that, let's first set up some parallel constraints, select the lines, 
and make sure they're just parallel to each other. Let's go ahead and create the lines in the opposite direction from the top, following down to the bottom and repeating the exact same steps in the opposite direction. From here, let's go ahead and set up some constraints and do the exact same thing for the lines that we've created in the opposite direction. And by now you should have the basic look of our web created with Infusion. The next thing we need to do here is to create the web for our design. To do that, let's go ahead and click on finish sketch, then press S, type in web, then select web, and what you can do is by either holding command or control if you're on Mac or Windows, we can go ahead and select all the lines shown here. And with that done, let's go ahead and set the depth to 2.5 millimeters and press OK. Now, if we turn off sketch four and sketch one and our canvas, you can now see the basic look of our webbing on our milk crate. To repeat this pattern onto the other side without having to do the exact same steps, we can press S, type in mirror, then select the last feature within our timeline, selecting the middle origin plane here and press OK. Now, as you can see, our pattern doesn't directly line up with what we've created. Now, if you're totally happy with how your design looks, then we can go ahead and continue. If you wanna go ahead and make changes, you can double click on the sketch feature here and go ahead and make sure everything lines up with each other. Ideally, you're gonna to wanna to have these lines touching each other so that way they match up once they're connected. Once you're happy with your design, finish sketch, and now you can see this design is pretty much flawless. From here, we need to create the handle as shown on the top corner here. To do that, let's turn on the canvas, then create sketch, then selecting the top face shown here. From here, let's go ahead and create a circle by selecting center diameter circle, and what I'm going to do is just draw a circle right in the very middle here. I'm not aiming for perfection. I'm just creating the circle and we'll go ahead and set up some values here in a moment. I'm also going to create an offset for this circle by pressing O, then selecting the circle and then setting this to 1.5. And then making sure it goes in the opposite direction, which is a negative 1.5 and press OK. From here, I'm gonna press L on my keyboard and create a line here down the middle. And what I wanna do now is just create a basic cutout by pressing E on our keyboard, selecting all these profiles in the center and then just dragging it to the other side. Next, I wanna use this profile here to kind of finish off this design and give it a closed look. And then once you've selected all of these profiles here, press E, selecting the opposite side and change the operation to join. Press okay. Now we have the basic look of our milk crate shown here uh, we can turn off sketch five, then turn off our canvas. And now you have the basic look of our milk crate. Pretty cool. Now with your milk crate fully designed, all we need to do now is just repeat these patterns all around the entirety of this cube. To do that, what we want to do is press S on our keyboard, type in circular pattern. Then a dialog box will be shown here. 
what we want to do is select the features that created this design. To find those features, you can hover over to your timeline down below. And depending on what feature you hover over, it's going to highlight shown within the environment here. What we want to do is select the features relevant to creating that design. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the ones that we use to create those features, which I would say is everything from extrude to all the way up to now. Let's go ahead and select the axis, which is the Z axis. Then we want to set the quantity to four. Now fusion might take a little while to add all the features to your milk crate, but that pretty much wraps everything up. You have the basic design of your milk crate designed within Fusion 360, and now you can hold pens, tools, and other accessories inside this milk crate. Let's go ahead and export this to our slicer by hovering over to Bodies, then right-clicking on Body 1, click on Save as Mesh, then press OK. It should automatically populate within your slicer, and if we were to slice this with a 0.4 nozzle, This would take us around three hours and 50 minutes to print. One additional note is that you might see blue lines or a blue highlighted feature underneath it. Your slicer is basically telling you it needs support, but due to the nature of this design and due to the fact that these lines being printed, they're not too far apart, it's very unlikely your printer will need support to fully print this piece. So you should be fine without it, but just in case you have an older machine, just make sure to slow down your printer so that way it's not printing too fast, giving enough time for your filament to cool while it's printing over those edges. So with all that said, let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section down below. Additionally, I'm also hosting the 14 day challenge, teaching you exactly how to design and sell your own 3D printable models. Even if you're a complete beginner, don't know where to start, and don't want to spend weeks to months trying to figure this stuff out. Each video in the 14 day challenge is 10 to 15 minutes long. And if you get stuck, you can always ask questions inside the community for help. And the best part about this challenge is that all the models you design and make are yours to keep, yours to sell, and can help you build your portfolio in the long run. So if you're interested in taking the challenge, click the link down below in the description. And with that said, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.